I'm gonna give you the best exercises that you can use to improve your back speed, and we're gonna start right now. Okay, so when we're talking about bat speed, I think it's really important to look at what are we going to be using from a global perspective and even start to think about some of the technique that is going to go into swinging the bat. And I think if we could just understand, one of the greatest hitters of all time, Tony Gwynn, would talk about swinging the bat and not placing the barrel somewhere, but actually swinging from the knob and letting the knob control the entire barrel. That's a big aspect. And a lot of coaches are probably going to disagree with that. But I'm gonna err on the side of Tony Gwynn. He talks about stability, he talks about balance, and again, swinging the knob and letting the knob control the barrel instead of just thinking about the barrel. Now, we've got the technique done, okay? We talked about stability and balance. I also think we have to look at, you know, if I'm a left-handed swinger, okay, just use this from the aspect of physiology. If I'm looking at coming through the zone here, okay, I'm gonna see ulnar deviation in my wrist, okay? So my forearm strength has to be very, very impressive, and it also has to fire at a very high speed. We've also gotta think about that stability and the balance coming from that controlled trunk. Okay, we also have to look at what are we doing with our hips here, okay? What, how are we controlling our hips? How are we actually having a counter movement when we're gonna be going to actually swing that bat? I just wanna focus here, look at this ulnar deviation. This is an easy warm up that you can do to even get the abs, the hips, and the forearms rolling together, and even from those lats as well. So if we understand, a lot of the bat speed work is gonna go back to the hands, but the hands will ultimately be controlled by the lats, the abs, the hips, the glutes, okay, the hamstrings, all of these things are gonna play a major role. And so we're gonna go into these different movements. We're gonna start with general exercises, then we're gonna give you some ab-based movements, and then we're gonna give you some very, very sport-specific movements that you can use to increase that bat speed. Okay, so the first general movement that we're gonna give you is going to be a power clean, and you can do a power clean into a full clean, so a little bit of a complex. A lot of baseball players still refuse to lift weights. But if we just think about, look, get a little bit more explosive, gain a little bit more muscle mass. And if you're gaining a little bit more muscle mass, you learn how to fire that at very high speeds, okay? And if we could just use clips of Bryce Harper and how quickly he can turn on the ball and the fact that he can clean 315 to 330 pounds, yes, you can still be a good baseball player and lift weights. I'm not telling everyone out there to go out and look like Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire back in the day, but other athletes, someone like Barry Bonds, he was also very well known for one, being an absolutely savage hitter, and two, he did lift a lot of weights. Yes, I know he also did drugs, but if we can just take the lessons from them and use something like the power clean, you can do five sets of two, six sets of three, something like that, you can do that on the minute, that's going to improve your global innervation. So you're gonna be able to fire very, very rapidly. And that's exactly what we need when we're increasing that bat speed. And that's going to transfer very, very well to overall power. All right, so that second general exercise, we need to look for another movement that's going to help us be as reactive as possible. So when we're doing these exercises, when we're doing these movements, typically this next exercise would be done on athlete day. So if you guys need help with your programming and you don't understand what athlete day is you can head over to peak strength that app and you can pick up our app peak strength which is going to help you lead to becoming a better baseball player now when we talk about being fast and being reactive we've got to think about that counter movement okay and if we watch someone like vlad guerrero jr mike trout the best hitters in the league we can see that as the pitcher's arm is getting into their arm slot they're starting their counter movement okay so they're already starting that counter movement to actually initiate their swing, okay? And that counter movement creates a stretch shortening cycle. When that stretch shortening cycle is used effectively, you have better control over the bat and you have better speed. And this is where that next movement comes into play. This is going to be a hurdle hop. So if we can develop baseball players to be fast, okay? And to use their hips very well, and then we can trigger them to be even twitchier and to recruit high threshold motor units at very, very high speeds, that's gonna improve their ability to swing the bat and the speed, the velocity of the bat. So we can use something like this, easy hurdle hops here. Boom, boom, 
and we want to react quickly. Now, think about these jumps, okay? If I'm going in, I'm doing a counter movement here. Okay, you almost want to be in the exact same position as when you're starting to initiate your swing. So that counter movement will look like, boom, okay, here, boom, and then when I land, it's going to be the same, that same exact position. So here, boom, boom. React a little bit quicker than I just did though. So you can do hurdle hops, five sets of four hurdles, rest about two minutes. Do this inside of the athlete day, day three of peak strength. And typically you should do this during the ascension phase and the summit phase. Remember in the beginning, we talked about going through with some general movements and we're gonna get into some ab exercises. After those ab exercises, we're gonna give you some really, really sweet specific movements. These ab movements that we're about to share are also really, really pretty specific to the aspect, to the action of actually swinging the bat. Now, we also have to think about when we're doing these movements, what's that same feeling that we want to have so that they transfer very, very well. I also am gonna provide some examples so that you can change the way you do these exercises when you're further out from the baseball season versus when you're getting into the baseball season so that you can understand how to do these at different periods of training. So this first ab exercise is going to be a side medicine ball throw, okay? So if I'm further out from a season, okay, let's say I'm 15 to 20 weeks out from the season, I could do a side medicine ball throw with a heavier med ball, let's say a 20 or 25 pounder, okay? And I might have that just look like a side medicine ball throw here and just throw, okay? So I'm here, boom, 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 okay? So that would be just a general med ball throw. Easy, go a little bit heavier weight. I've got that 10 pounder right there. As I would get closer to this season, I would want to decrease that load. Okay, so instead of using say a 20, let's say I get down to a 12 pound med ball or a 10 pound med ball. And I would also want to use something that would transfer to actually throwing a ball as well. So in this case, I would do this and I would add in an actual step and I would want someone to throw it to me where I would catch it and go. So that's gonna make it a little bit more dynamic. So you could have a partner throw the ball to you, you could catch, boom, okay? And get a little bit more explosive here, boom. And that's gonna transfer really, really well as I trip over a leg extension. That's gonna transfer really, really well. So you wanna get a little bit more rapid, a little bit more dynamic, the heavier weight will still benefit you. And even if you're further out, you can do this with like side medicine balls while you're sitting on your butt. And then as you continue to develop, you get more general strength, you get a little bit more dynamic. Now we're gonna get into that fourth key exercise, which is also gonna be ab related, but you're gonna be doing that while training the hips. So the next movement we mentioned is gonna use your hips and your abs. And we've gotta think about when we're swinging the bat and improving that overall exit velocity, how can we coordinate our lats? How can we have that stable dynamic trunk control linked into our hips, okay? And if we're doing things like the hurdle hops and we're doing things like the side medicine ball throws, that's gonna help us understand that counter movement. When we have a better counter movement, that leads to a better stretch shortening cycle, that in turn leads to more power, okay? So we've gotta learn those skills. And when we're training them specifically in the weight room, we have to improve those skills over time. So the next exercise is one of my favorite unique movements, okay? So we can get a back extension here. Every gym has a back extension. If you're a baseball player and you wanna be one of the best in the world and you're training at a gym that doesn't have this equipment, find a new gym, okay? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna put my lead leg inside, okay, facing forward up top, and then I'm gonna have my back leg, okay, here. And you wanna switch, you wanna do both sides, okay? You definitely wanna do both sides. Now, I'll show you this. This is our garage strength balance pad right here. This is available at garagestrength.com. You can put this here to just provide a little bit more support. We're gonna use that again later, so you're gonna see the versatility of it. We're gonna grab this medicine ball here, okay? And I wanna feel my hips. I wanna feel my glutes on this side, and I wanna feel my adductors here on the inside of, of this leg, the lead leg. I'm gonna be in position, and I wanna think about coming down this plane. And what we can do first is just go here, boom, okay? Ooh. And while we're getting all the way down here, we wanna feel that big stretch, squeeze, come back up, okay? So we can do like seven, eight, nine reps, okay? Now, the next side, we wanna do both sides. The next set, what we're gonna do is get a little bit more creative. We wanna see a little bit of a drop. So we're here, boom, 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 boom. 
one more. Boom, okay? We wanna really feel the stretch down at the bottom and come back up to the top. And if you get really, really good, we've even had people stand up here, drop, and get back up and throw. So this movement is absolutely fantastic. It transfers really, really well. It's specific to the abs while incorporating the entire body. Again, this is something you would typically do on impulse day. I would do this as we get closer to the season. So that's gonna be the ascension phase, the summit phase. The first two phases, you could do just a general back extension, maybe like a rotational ab, but you get more specific as you get closer to the season. Five sets of nine, about a minute and a half to two minutes rest. Okay, so the next two movements. Remember, we told you we were gonna give you those general exercises. Power clean, full clean. Okay, hurdle hops. Then we told you we were gonna give you those ab movements. So that was when we did the side medicine ball throws, and then we did the drop back extension. Now we're getting into the more specific movements. So these are exercises that you could do to warm up for a game. These are movements that you could do on an athlete day, okay? These are gonna be exercises that almost directly mimic the actual event of swinging a baseball bat. Not to a perfect example, but it's going to mimic the actual rotation. And so this first exercise is going to be a single leg banded rotation. And I'm gonna show two different variations here. So first, we're gonna get into this position here, and we want this to be back behind us, okay? And then as we come down, I'm gonna come forward, okay? Remember, we wanna feel that counter movement and try and train that. So we're here, and you can even use this back knee as a target if you want. And what happens is you start to feel that in your glute and in your hamstring and in this opposite side of your ab, okay? So you'd wanna do both sides, especially if you're a switch hitter, but you need to do both sides no matter what. Now, another example of this could be done where I'm here and I come down, come back up, come down, come back up, come down, and then I hold this and I wanna pulse and just go boom, 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 okay? So we wanna feel that tension from the hands all the way into the abs. Remember back to what we talked about with Tony Gwynn, okay? We're swinging the knob. We're not swinging the barrel, we're swinging the knob, okay? So we wanna feel that tension in the hands, but how the abs and the hips connect to the hands is really what's gonna to transfer to that greater exit velocity. Okay, so now we're gonna give you two movements here. So I, I think I might have specified that there was gonna be six exercises. Maybe I never actually specified, but I'm gonna show you two more movements that are gonna be specific. So we just showed you with the single leg roller and this single leg squat stand is available at garagestrength.com if you wanna pick this up. And if you're a baseball player, you really should be training single leg squats. So you should pick that up. Now, we're gonna do something really, really dynamic. And these are our own custom made bands here. These are called the Power Elastics. These are also available at garagestrength.com. The reason why we love to use these is because of the handles. This could be something that would help you guys warm up before a game with external rotations, with band pull-aparts. You can do banded movement, the ulnar deviation to try and feel what your wrist should be doing prior to actually getting into that at bat. But now, I'm gonna give you some wild movements here, okay? So I wanna be able to change my trunk and have speed and tension on various different planes, okay? If I see a pitch coming in and based off of a specific pitcher's arm slot, I know, ideally, about what that individual is gonna be throwing based off the scenario of my at bat. Are they throwing a cutter? Are they throwing you know, a slider or a curve or, or a knuckleball, you know, anything crazy, fastball, whatever. What is that scenario? And we need to be able to react quickly based off of what that scenario is and then be able to apply a large amount of force. So I wanna use a movement here where we're gonna have a plate swing in this single leg position. And we want to train both sides. Again, we're here. Come up. Oh yeah. Boom. We wanna go down, counter movement, rotate back up. Back up. Back up. Okay, so we're gonna do four to the left side. Now the unique part is we're feeling tension a little bit lower, raising that up. We're gonna contrast this with the opposite side in a higher band. Okay, so we'll be here and we'll go Okay, so we wanna go four low to high, four high to low, and then we'll switch legs and do the opposite. Okay, so the main goal here is we're trying to learn how to move rapidly and rotationally through various different planes. 
that's the main goal here on improving that overall exit velocity. I recommend doing this again on an athlete day. If you guys need help with your training, you feel a little bit lost in how to actually program for baseball because baseball coaches still don't think you should lift weights and you wanna figure out how you can become more specific with that applied general strength, head over to peakstrength.app, Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, pick that up today. Because the worst thing that you can do is to do nothing. Now start your journey today so that you can attain peak strength. Until next time, guys, peace.